I'm very excited about this coding challenge. This coding challenge is inspired by the book called Ten Print, which is all about this line of code. Ten Print CHR dollar sign 205.5 plus random one go to 10. So this is a line of code for the Commodore 64. And this book, which is written by, uh, by a, 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 a collaboration of many authors. I'll put a link to information about this book. The book is available for free as a PDF online. I'm looking at the website right now. Um, and it's a beautiful book. I have two copies of it downstairs. I wish I had my one copy to hold up here right now. Um, but it really looks at the history of creative computing sort of through the lens of this one line of code for an old Commodore 64 computer. So what does this line of code do? So here's a nice uh, YouTube video. I'll link to this as well. I'm going to make this full screen here where you can see an emulator now typing out this line of code. And let's see what we get. Run. Run it. Oh, there we go. Look at this. We get this interesting maze pattern. So let me pause this for a second and let's try to figure out why is this happening. So this is uh, the basic programming language. I think that's right. That's actually one of the first programming languages I ever used when I was probably when I was in, I think, about third grade on an Apple II C, I seem to remember. Um, Back with basic programming language, lines of code had a line number, like the line 10. Tr print says print something out to the screen, to the con it's really just only a text console. And then this is print the character either, and I'm assuming here that the character 205 in ASCII code is a forward slash, and the character 206 in ASCII code is a backward slash. So randomly pick up, make this math problem between 205.5 plus 1, I'm either going to get 206 or 205. So print out either forward slash or backslash slash, and then go to 10. So I want to recreate this and I'm not the, the there's examples already been made in processing. I'm really just uh, redoing what's already been done from the, the, the publication of this book. But I want to do it as a coding challenge and see what kind of creative possibilities emerge um, because you could, this system, which has a shape, two shapes and probability, think of what you could do if you change the way the probability works if you allow it to be controlled, if you think about the shapes creatively. Now that we have Canvas and the browser, there's a lot of possibilities here. So let me, uh, and, I, 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 and again, if I said anything wrong about the Commodore 64 and basic and ASCII code, I'm sure somebody will correct me in the chat, and then I'll come back at the end of this video and, and correct that. Okay, so let's look. Let's, I, I need to uh, write a setup function, and I'm gonna make a Canvas. That's 400 by 400, and I'm gonna say background zero just so we can see it easily. And I'm gonna to go to the browser and I'm gonna unfull screen this and I'm gonna go here and now I have my canvas. There we go. So what do I wanna do? First, let's figure out how do I draw a forward slash or a backward slash? So I could draw it as a line, line 0, 0, 10, 10. This is, I don't know, that's like a backward slash like that, right? Now I could say, line, now what do I want? If I want to go from the bottom to the top, like a forward slash, I'm going to go from 0, 10 to 10, 0, right? Forward slash. Now I've drawn them both there. So now what I want to do is I want to say, ah, maybe, how do I do probability? So I've done this in a lot of videos and I'm just typing it out. Now I probably, uh, I, I, so let's think about it. Just type this out here. This is a way of, of, a, of applying a probabilistic function. I don't know if that's a good way to say it. This is probability in my code because I'm going to pick a random number between 0 and 1. Half the time it's going to be greater than 0.5. Half the time it's going to be less than 0.5. So half the time I'm going to draw a backward slash. Half the time I'm going to draw a forward slash. Now, of course, it's just doing this over and over again in the same space on top of each other. So what I want to do is move forward as if I were a console printing out forward slash, backward slash. So what I need is some global variables like let x equal 0, let y equal 0. So I'm going to draw these at x, y, x plus 10, uh, y plus 10. I could use a translate or something, but let me just do it with offsets, uh, at y plus 10, Sorry, and x plus 10 and y. So just to make sure, it's still sort of the same thing. But now, what, could I, what do I need to do? What if I increase x? x equals x plus 10. So every frame, I'm going to move to the next spot. There we go. One line. Now, it's hard to see that all the way across. One line all the way across. And um, 
Oh, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Oh, you know what's important here? I should think of the 10 as some sort of like, space. I'm gonna call that spacing. So, because we might wanna change that. So I should really use a variable for that. And then, if x gets to the end, if it's greater than width, I should reset x back to zero and have y increase by spacing. So let's look at that. There we go. I now have 10 print in P5JS. Uh, in the chat, I just was told I left a 10 here by accident. So let me fix that. So now here's the thing. What's kind of amazing is that simple code created this suddenly quite elaborate, beautiful maze pattern. And uh, I've, you know, thank you to the authors of the 10 print book for inspiring me uh, when the book came out to like really try this and use this in my teaching. Um, I often give this as an assignment to look at the book and try to like invent your own 10 print design. So how would you invent your own 10 print design? Well, what are the parameters of the system? One thing is just the spacing. So you know, I could make spacing equal 50 and that's gonna change things quite a bit. Let me put it back at 20, just so we can sort of see it a little bit bigger and moves a little bit more quickly. But one thing I could do is change the probability. So what if I say, you know what? There's a 90% chance of drawing a backward slash or a forward slash. I don't know which one's which, a 10% of the other one. Now we get a pattern that has a certain quality to it because almost all the slashes are back slashes except for every once in a while there's a forward slash. That probability could be adjusted with a slider over time. I could also think about color. You know, the, the other thing here is like, what if I just did something like draw a rectangle or not? You know, even just this idea of each cell on this grid either placing a rectangle there or not, I've already got some type of generative comp. So this is really, what I guess what this is, is this is an example of computational design or procedural design. I have an algorithm that specifies the design. You have Saul Lewitt's wall drawings. I'll try to put some link, links to information about the artist Saul Lewitt and his wall drawings. It's a nice example of this. The rules are generating the design, and that design could be the same every time, but with probability it could be different every time. So I hope, um, I don't want to go much further with this and change too much more, because I would like to see what you do uh, in, and you could also think, by the way, you could, the other thing you could change is the, the way that I'm drawing this is I'm animating it one line at a time without changing the background, but you could think about displaying it all at once or animating it in a different way from the center. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities there too. So I hope that you will create your own 10 print design. You will share it with me uh, on Twitter or in the comments, and then you can also submit it as a pull request to the readme file that's associated with this sketch's code, and I'll include a link to that also in this video's description. Um, so hold on one second. Did I mess anything up about my Commodore 64 and explaining the basic programming language? Uh, import, important correction. Uh, it turns out that the Commodore 64 did not use the ASCII table as we know it today. It has its own character set. That's why, because the ASCII code for a backslash is like 42 or 92 or 97. That's not that. You know, I could look it up in an ASCII table, but it doesn't match 205 and 206. So I did get that wrong in my earlier explanation. I'm seeing in the chat it's the extended ASCII table. So I didn't see any other corrections. I think I mostly got everything else right in this video. And so please share with me your 10 print designs. Uh, check out the book 10 print. Thank the authors of the book for the great work that they did to uh, talk about the history of this line of code and how it relates to creative computing. Compoding. <laughs> Goodbye and I'll see you in another coding challenge. Thanks.